So that was the bit on the right was the farmhouse. Okay. And then he kind of like made it massively bigger. So he built another whole wing on the outside and joined the two together with this big conservatory. So wow. he took essentially a big farmhouse and kind of made it a massive house. This is sort of massive. Yeah. It's beautiful though. It is. <coughs> this wisteria is amazing, darling, isn't it? Over the yeah. front of this. There's how they've trained it and kept it. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Here do what? We were meant to go in through the other door. Oh, thanks. <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, a little bit of the orchid extravaganza has found its way in here. Yeah. Are you going to walk through the house or are you going to stay here? We'll, we'll see in a bit. Wow. Do we go in this way? Oh, this way. This way? So these are amazing. So when they, when they made these legal contracts, mm -hmm. they wrote two copies and then on one piece of parchment and then they cut it with an irregular wavy line. So oh. you can tell they're both the same contract because the two halves will match up perfectly. Gotcha. And so you know from the seller and the buyer that, that, that actually this is the authentic copy because you have this one and the other one is lodged with the county or whatever the deal is. Nice. And then you know that this isn't a fake deed, it's the real deed because it matches the, the, other, the other part of it. Wow. And in this case, it's, it's really been owned by, so this is, uh, the Pierce family had this as their, as their farm as part of the original Penn land grant. Yeah. So, uh, so when William Penn was splitting up this gift from the King of England of Pennsylvania into parcels, this, mm -hmm. this, was, this defines one of these original parcels of land. Wow. This is the, the original house. When, uh, so when the Pierce family had it before Pierre Dupont bought it, mm -hmm. this is this is them oh, right. gathered out the gathered out the front, and it's kind of very long, impractical, heavy Victorian dresses. <laughs> yeah. And then this tells you this sort of all the all the, the arboretum is that way, but this tells you about these guys Joshua and Samuel Pierce who began collecting um, trees in, in, in just before 1800 hmm. um, and they began to plant, plant them. Nice. So there's like a, a variety of different species of trees here. Yeah, yeah. So this is, the, this is what it would look like. So we'll, we'll go out the back in a bit, but in the mid-1800s, 18, uh, 18, 18, 18, this is 1884, so, so when it's still owned by the Pierces. Huh. And really it's a kind of a, a number of different, different conifers. And we'll go and see, they've got a little, there's a oh pond in the park and they had some Wait, grapes guys, out on the park. Nice. So even before, be even before so. Pierre Dupont bought it, it was still quite a pleasure guys oh, for people just to sort of wander around. Gotcha, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I found a way in. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 So once, um, well, after so it says after George Washington Pierce had died in 1880, the, the park began to 
crumble and quality a little bit. And then 1905, so 20 years after those photographs when it was his heyday, mm -hmm. they decided to sell the property, and the people who were going to buy the property were going to just cut the trees down for lumber. Um, and uh, wow. Pierre de Pont learned about it and bought it in 1906 to save the, save the trees. And yeah. this is the little tree. Wow. And then he began to get carried away and was seen and something like that. Wow. And this is this is his right, he guys, went to, uh, he visited to Europe for the great ex 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 expedition. No, mm -hmm. ex 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 Bachelor, de Bachelor of Science in Chemistry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Big chemical company was going to run in the, in the family, all that kind of gunpowder they were going to make and manufacture, which made their fortune in the wars. Yeah. Wow. And this is quite interesting. When we go and see like some of his formal gardens as he's laid out, mm -hmm. if, if, you, if you look at this sort of beautiful thing in front of Versailles, this is, this is where the kings and queens of um, France used to have as their main palace. It's, it's about kind mm. of, uh, I don't know, an hour out of Paris. Mm. And, and they have these fant fabulous gardens. And the, the formal gardens that are laid out that way that we'll see, mm -hmm. you, can, you look at that and you look at the gardens we're going to see and you can see that he was taken by this whole French style. Mm. And then if you look at this is this is in London, Crystal Palace. It's now come down, but it was built for the Great Exhibition in London. And the, this is just a, a view inside Crystal Palace. And, and again, actually, when you go and see, this is about 1900, and he w he went there. He was there just 10 years before that. Mm -hmm. When you see his conservatory, you can see that it's a bit like that as well, in the sense that some of these are some of these things are so like what he built here that that the the implication is that this trip was very formative on him and thinking if I had an unlimited amount of money which as the heir of DuPont Chemical and the CEO of General Motors effectively had an infinite sum of money what mm -hmm. would I what would I build and mm -hmm. I think some of some of what you see around what we're going to see in the gardens around here tells you what you do if you've got an infinite amount of money in gardens to do the fancy thing. I hear you <laughs> He definitely put a lot of thought into what he wanted and how he wanted it. Yeah. Wow. 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 These things don't all exist anymore. Oh. So, so this we'll, we'll see this. This is this looks very different to this, but this this garden here is just down there, um, and the house is up here. Mm -hmm. And he continues this walkway on further. But in 1909, when he only lived here for um, three years. He, he, they hadn't done any of the extra development that's gonna gonna come now. Right. This kind of reminds me of Versailles in a way. Yeah, yeah, no, that's right. It doesn't exist anymore. It was replaced in 1976. So. Wow. And did he pick a lot of like? Did he hand pick a lot of these plants that that are here? Or yeah. wow. Yeah. And then that's the, you know, we look down on the theatre. That's mm -hmm. it. That's looking at it from the other side in the fullness of summer. Ah. Um, and this is, it was, so this is 1924. He put this in. Well, that's the photograph. So, yeah, yeah, no, quite quickly. So he was here in 1906. So this is 1314 is when it was built. Hmm. Wow. And then this is the sort of underground. There's a 
dressing room because it was used as a theatre as well as um, so it's like a performance there in the early days. Oh uh, yeah. And what's this? Open air. Yes, this is like the control so board. This is the control board for all the for the fountains and lights and things. Uh, um, interesting. And so it got. Uh, so the so he was. This is interesting. He said he said he'd, he'd watch the operator doing. It. How how did you do that? Mm -hmm. And then he and and the, what they're saying is that you, it's very difficult to recreate an effect with the fountains because you had to do it all manually with the, you know controlling these levers. But they put a computerized control system in in 1986, so now you can just say, do that, and uh, the thing will repeat all the, all the, all the switches. Wow. Yeah. So this is quite fanciful. Um, so this is quite a pretty... That's Pierre Dupont and Alice, his wife. Hmm. And then that's the fountain that we walked past. We walked on that path there, so we looked down onto the fountains from above. Mm -hmm. This is the house. You can see the conservatory in the middle, so we're in the house here. Oh. And then this, the original, this is the woods, and we'll see that we'll, we're going to see those. And then beneath the house, this is the that circular pond and the, fl and the flower garden, which, oh. which originally only came to here, but he extended further down that one. Nice. And then some of the things on the bottom. Cool. Hmm. I like the fact that there's a, like a, a lot of natural sunlight too. Oh yeah, amazing. I, I like that. Yeah. So I don't know what all this costs. Must cost a fortune to build the whole thing, but. Yeah. Clearly, a lot of when he took this house, which would have been this rectangle, mm -hmm. and essentially trebled the living space by building another rectangle the same size in this whole thing. Yeah. Clearly, this conservatory in the middle is a big part of the design, is to have this huge indoor outdoor space with just flooding yeah. lights so that you can. Yeah. Plants can grow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. How many times have you come here? Like I don't know, a few times. A few times. Yeah. So we've had we basically probably had like a membership here three times in the last seven years. Okay. So and when we've had a membership in a year, we've probably visited. This looks like this must have been the, the original kind of kitchen. The, yeah. A big spit. There. Wow. This is the boiler's heat is conservatory, which is huge. We'll, we'll end up at the conservatory after, after a while. But the, uh, this says the present boilers use 150,000 gallons of oil a year. Can you imagine? That's insane. It is. And what does it cost? It's like nearly $3 a gallon or something like that. So $400,000 yeah. worth of heating a year. just to keep for the plants. <laughs> That's insane. That's insane. That's insane. That's a house right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeez. And we'll we'll see this but without the people, but this is in the conservatory. Okay. So that's just on a on a floor where you might just display stuff in the middle of the conservatory. But there's loads of people there. Gotcha. It's a huge space. Is this, is this like, oh, the ceiling? Okay. It's like a design, yeah, for the... Uh, wow. I haven't looked, we must go and look upwards, because I haven't... Uh, oh, it's in, it's in here. It's in the um, music room ceiling. Or at least that looks like that, doesn't it? That's the yeah, same. That's, yeah. 
That's the design. Yeah. Wow. And they've got, so he's even got an organ in his uh, conservatory. Oh, wow. <laughs> I don't even know how you play that. It has one, it says it's got one, two, three, four. Four. And then what are, are these? Um... So they're all stops. So, so basically each, each, um, each rank, each, each keyboard is connected to so many pipes. Yeah. And you can determine how many of the pipes are played at one time by clicking oh. all these switches to basically switch them on. And then underneath the keys, all those little round things are pistons. So if you press one, you get a, a new combination of um, stops that opens up. Okay. So, so you might press one and you'd have like really loud sound and press another you get a really quiet sound. And then you can use your feet too. And you use your feet as well. And then the big round things on the feet are um, foot pistons, so you can get different pres presets. Wow. We're going to see this, but this is the very first side, like formal garden layout. Okay. Wow. And then we went to we saw this once. So in the evening, a big firework display with the fountains lit up and the fireworks over the top, and lots of music. So, yeah. So you can obviously only play one. You can only play one keyboard at a time, or yeah. maybe two with two hands. But the um, fact that you've got lots of keyboards means you've got an instant change of sound from one to the from one to the other. Yeah. And, um, Have you ever played a? You played a pipe organ, right? Yeah. But I don't, I can't really play with my feet at all, so there. Gotcha. And I think the, um, so I think having two, having two keyboards for the organ is really sensible. Because mm -hmm. you can get, you can play one, one with one hand and then you get a different sound on the, on the, with, the, with the, your right hand to your left hand because you set the steps differently. Right. That's cool. Having three, I could just about get my head around because you might have a, you've got set a preset for a really sort of quiet sound for the middle of a piece and you can change. You have four keyboards, excessive. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Possible or not. Yeah. This is the pantry, okay. Yeah, yeah, so this is part of the, this, I don't know where the original house would have ended, but I suspect this is probably... The original house here? Yeah, so look at this wall here. Yeah. This is pretty thick and it's all wall. Yeah. So I reckon this then is the, begins the addition. Okay. Whether or not this was originally a little, this is just a, 
This is a good place to take your boots off coming in from outside or something like that. Yeah. Almost like a mudroom in a way. Yeah, like a mudroom, I reckon. Mm. Yeah, well, there's always this idea, isn't there? Mm. So, uh, and then it's got some storage built in here, which is like the storage in here. Yeah. And then these are all, I don't know what's in here, but there's plates and cutlery and obviously... That's like a vault, that's a vault. Back. It's a big vault, that's fine. Right. Yeah. I'm worried about the people coming and stealing the silver. Yeah. And really funky thing, so this is 1913, this is an electric towel dryer. What? Can you imagine? More than 100 years old. Electric towel dryer? <laughs> That's in... Wow. Wow. So they already begin to build in all the sort of... Huh? I suspect that's a bit like plate warmer. Yeah. Down, 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 down. Oh yeah, plate warmer. Huh. It doesn't look like it's an oven, but it might be. It might be. Yeah. 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 Warm the plates. Yeah. If I'm guessing. <laughs> wow. But just but just by touching this door, you can feel the difference in the metal compared to day. Uh-huh. Like it's it's more durable. It's painted with a lot of enamel. So you're touching you're touching that enamel paint. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. Which rooms? Ah. So if you so if you've got your kind of your staff are working in here in the pantry. Yeah. And you know, Alice DuPont wants a cup of tea in her room, she she press the button and it would ring and then the flag would turn up to tell you who'd rung the bell. Gotcha. <laughs> Interesting. And then someone goes up and says this is Dupont. What can I? What can I? How can I help you? <laughs> like nineteenth century intercom. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh. Well, early 1900s, or nineteen hundred. Yeah. Oh wow. I mean, even just the little bit that I have seen. To get the full feel of it, you would need, I would think, at least two days. A while to wander around here. Yeah. yeah, at least. Because yeah. there's just so much. Like there's. Yeah. But. And he gave he gave money to build. Um, more than 120 public schools in Delaware and Pennsylvania. Oh. Uh, contributed to more than $3 million to area hospitals. So think about um, the DuPont Children's Hospital. That's, that's money from this family. Wow. Um, embarked on a public road improvement system. So his charitable contributions today would amount to about $120 million. <laughs> wow. DuPont sponge. <laughs> what? DuPont nylon? Okay. Wow. Awesome. And every one of them, as they passed an orchid that was sort of just sticking out into the middle of it, every one of them had to kind of like clutch it or hit it or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it friendly? This way? Or this way? This way? Okay, we'll go this way. Sorry. Sorry. That's okay. There's probably a tree in that hole at one point when they built the tree house. Wow. Wow. Look at that meadow. That's amazing. It's planted up with a whole pile of um, native species. So really? It grows up to sort of this little height in the summer. Really? Yeah. 
And is that a house way over there? It is. Yeah. Is that a part of this or is that separate? That's part of it. Wow. Yeah. Way over there. It must originally have been its own little farmhouse way, way back when. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't mind having all that as my land. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I would not get bored. So there's a bridge down here, okay. Yeah, sure. And so that's the, from the house. This is the, those are the trees. So that photograph you saw of two lines of conifers is mm -hmm. of these trees running down here. Oh, I see. And then there are more trees beneath it that are part of the arboretum. Gotcha. Oh, wow. Wow. It's right over there, yeah. The redwood. 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 Wow. That's fascinating. So I didn't. Because the redwoods in California are those trees which are like massive, massive. massive. Yeah, but this is probably quite a young one then. This would be. Good. Well, maybe they just grow bigger in California. It says a lot more than just redwood, but that was one of them. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I think so. That is a... That's good that I knew, isn't it? Wow. Wow. That's a... Beautiful bath, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. I guess it's producing, they've all been cut, it keeps producing new little nodules off yeah. the end. New, new growth. Yeah. It's amazing how much you can use for the little leaf lens. Linden family. Beautiful. Wow. I'm certain, like in the summertime, they have all these filled with water. Yeah, when they get past the phosphorus. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't spare no expense for details. That's for sure. <laughs> wow. <He> did not. <laughs> wow. To be able to actually do this is amazing. Yeah, yeah. So if you think think about laying this out, this is like how many this, you could probably build twenty houses for the cost of doing this. I should think. I don't know. Pretty yeah. much, yeah. I uh, think about how much concrete. So it's just the expense is just 
astronomical. Stag- staggering, staggering. Yeah. And if you think about it, the like the you know, the trees that he picked, like the redwood and then the like he probably different types of marble that he used. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, just one slab alone could probably be a house. But everything complements each other, you know? Even, like, all the different species of trees. What's this one? Box... These boxes? Box mood. Box mood. Okay. I didn't think redwoods could survive in cold climate, though. I didn't know. Maybe it's a special one that's able to deal with Pennsylvania. Maybe. This is another lake. Yeah, so I imagine this must be when that old photograph from the 1880s when it was owned by the Pierce family. Yeah. Put some quotes out. So I imagine they. I'm, I imagine them being here. Yeah. And that this this lake having been the sort of there's another lake above it actually over there. But I imagine them having boats out on, on this bit. Yeah. out of here and it goes I get it okay very creative Looks to be another redwood right there. Wow. Oh, look at that. Some people have carved their names into this tree. <laughs> yeah, it looks like quite a long time ago. Yeah. 1993. <laughs> 1993. a white oak. That's definitely a redwood. God, that thing is huge. Look at that. It's all the way up there. Wow. These are American hornbeam? Uh, this hemlock, darling. Yeah, I know. I think that's what you, it's the poison comes from. Yeah, Get I was Oh. It was native to China. Oh. So, oh, okay. Dawn Redwood. Ah, it remains even though it doesn't actually conform to the native plant thing. Well, that's funny because that's also a redwood by the water. I wonder. 
interesting. Yeah, that's, a, that's the same. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Unless it's a different redwood. Yeah. Mm. It's put up with a couple of... Mm. ...non-native trees. Mm. So all the fountains can be covered over to make it just uh, for a theatre. Interesting. So you can have a band or a play or something there. Cool. And then in the summer, all of this grass will be full of chairs and people can just sit and watch a performance or just watch the fountains. Nice. Ah. These hedges are cut with little holes, which allow the actors to come in from the very, from the sort of the backstage. Oh, okay. That's cool. Interesting. Darling, my verdict is that we have now earned a cup of tea. Do you think? Hmm. <laughs> interesting. <laughs> Very interesting. That's a lovely phrase here. For Pinafore, Mr. Dupont joined the scenery crew, painted, hammered, and consumed quantities of iced tea. At the party a week later, he proposed a tribute to the scenery builder who had hammered the Dupont thumb. <laughs> <laughs> So I would assume that that's the conservatory? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah, I think I would make that my house. <laughs> <laughs> I would make that my house. like the farmhouse and extend it to palatial size and, and then if this is your hobby, do it. And then a big if you want a party of two hundred people you have them in the conservatory rather than the house. Yeah. house. yeah. I like how they did this step layout with the Yeah. I like that. This kind of reminds me of uh, one of those old train stations from the 1930s. It's really, so you, can you see the design of this arch here and the thing? Yeah. It's an amazing photograph which isn't in the house anymore. He designed one of them, had just one of these windows standing in the middle of a field somewhere just to sort of walk and look and see what he thought about it. Yeah. And then when he decided he liked it, he built this with loads and loads of Wow. Oh. Oh, there we go. Wow. <laughs> it's excessive, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't that amazing?
Where are the, what are, what are they called? The, what are those things in these ads? Well, the boots. I guess they've just covered them in moths for now. No, and there's enough ads. Although these are, are different, ad, they? well, these are different types. Different type of You got it? I did it, yeah. Look at that. It's amazing. Wow. Let's see more. Alright, can't go past you, can't let get past the kids. Oh, oh, oh. That's probably like two years ago now. Yeah. Marvelous. Is there actual water down there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Inch or something to cover the to make it reflective. Gotcha. I was like, they really polished that marble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what are they using? And then I saw the ripple. I said, oh. Okay. An inch of water. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Looks like some kind of vine. Sitting there, haven't they? Mm. Sort of two cabooses and one regular.
Yeah, <coughs> It's the brandy one. 